Anyone paying really close attention may have noticed I switched over to a new terminal recently, so I'm not using ST anymore. I've now switched over to Alacrity, so let's just have a look at what this program actually is. I don't really have a big problem with ST, but Alacrity, it addresses some of the little issues that ST had, and none of its problems are really problems for me, I would say. So let's just have a look what Alacrity actually is. Now, it is a cross-platform GPU accelerated terminal emulator. If you've ever heard about Alacrity, you've probably already heard the fact that it's GPU accelerated and it's supposed to be really fast. To be honest, I haven't actually noticed any performance difference between this and ST. Now, I haven't actually timed it, but they feel roughly the same. And if they feel the same, I don't really care which is slightly quicker. If I don't notice a difference, then in my day-to-day -day life, it's not really going to be a big deal for me, I guess. So, Alacrity is the fastest terminal emulator in existence. Using the GPU for rendering it enables optimizations that simply aren't possible without it. Yeah, whatever. I don't actually care that it has GPU rendering. That's not why I'm actually using it. So, let's just have a quick look at the actual program. So, you'll notice it looks very similar to my ST build because I have put my theme on it. And, yeah, it, it's just going to look like any other terminal. Obviously, if it's a true color terminal, the theme's gonna look the same regardless of what I run it on. So, you should probably be able to notice that. Yes, it is a true color terminal. That is one of my absolute minimum requirements for a terminal. If it doesn't have true color support, I want nothing to do with it. Now, why am I actually using this? So, one thing is if I try to scroll, you notice that it doesn't actually output scroll characters here. Let's just run NeoFetch a couple of times so we have some stuff to scroll with. Now, that'll fill up my screen a little bit. If I just scroll, I have scroll built into the terminal. I don't need to install a separate patch. I don't need to hold down Alt or any other key. I can just scroll. Now, I don't have scrolling with my Vim keys, but I never actually use that. I know that some people prefer to scroll with their keyboard. That's never really been a thing that I've cared too much about, because generally, when I'm moving around my system, my hand's going to be on my mouse anyway. So, for me... I like to be able to scroll with my mouse, so that is nice to see. But that's not the only reason that I'm using this terminal. So it's also, as I said before, basically as fast as ST. Like, I don't really notice any difference between the two. They seem pretty much identical. I guess if we time them, there might be a difference. Let's time ST. So that's how long ST took. Let's time Alacrity. So, yeah, I guess it's... A bit slower but unless you're really paying attention to it you're probably not gonna notice I don't really notice it really so unless I'm running them side by side on a day-to-day -day basis there's pretty much no difference so the other nice thing about Alacrity is it actually renders fonts properly like ST does so I'm really used to the way that ST does fonts by that I mean that it actually anti-aliases them so with Kitty that doesn't anti-alias them your XVT has its own weird issues, but Kitty's the only other terminal that I really care about. So, Kitty doesn't actually anti-alias the fonts. So, on smaller font sizes, so if we just close this out and reopen the terminal, on smaller font sizes like this, it gets a little difficult for me to read the text, but Alacrity actually does properly anti-alias the text, so that problem isn't there whatsoever. So, that's not the end of it, though. So, the other nice thing you can do is let's just open up a man page that has a link in it. One nice thing is if you hover over a link, you can just click on the link. Now, I don't use it a ton, but it is really nice to have that feature there. I know there's ways you can do that with ST, like you can copy links and then paste it into a browser, or you can make it so if you highlight a link, you can then pipe that out to a browser or things like that. But really, I just want to be able to click on them because that's honestly just the, the most straightforward thing in my head at least. You may have also noticed before that I was actually zooming in on the text, so that is just bound to control equals by default to zoom in and control minus to zoom out. There's a good reason why it's on control equals and not control plus. So to do control plus, you also have to press the shift key. Whereas if you just put it on control equals instead, you don't actually have to press the shift key along with it. Now, I know some people do prefer on control plus just because if you think about the keys that you're pressing, that does make more logical sense when you think about the actual key codes. But from a usability perspective, I find it way easier for it just to be on control equals. Now, it also has the ability to reset your font size by going control zero, which is also a nice feature to see as well. As for other key bindings, the only one you'd probably really care about is doing control L, which is clear. It's always nice to see a terminal that actually has that built into it. Now, one thing you may want to keep in mind is that if you are a Ranger user, 
it doesn't actually support W3M previews, which is, I guess, a little bit of a problem, but I guess it's not that big of a deal, I guess. I don't really use Ranger anymore anyway, I use LF, but if you are a Ranger user, make sure you do keep that in mind so that when you do try to use this, that you're not actually disappointed. I've gotten used to not having image previews anymore though, so for me, I don't really care about it, but I just thought I'd let you guys know that in case you do want to try it out for yourself. I haven't tested this, but it might support Uberzog previews like ST does. If it does support that, then I guess you can do image previews like that, but I'm not really sure, so don't quote me on whether it does or not. Now, I might do a full dedicated video on the configuration file, but let's just jump into it quickly. I'm going to keep this terminal here open, and there's a very good reason for that. Let's just open up something else so we can see a bit more. There's a very good reason why I'm keeping this here, but let's go and change the font and see what happens. So, if you've ever used Alacrity before, you probably know what I'm going to do here. If we change this font from something like JetBrains Mono over to, I don't know, Source, Source Code Pro. Now, the awesome thing about this, you may have just noticed there, is that Alacrity actually supports live configuration updates. Now, this may be a bit of a problem, and I'm going to get to that in just a moment, but it is really, really cool to see live configuration updates. Now, where can this be a problem? Well, this can be a problem if you break something, and Alacrity has a uh, very bad tendency with its configuration file to break very, very easily and break really badly. So if we just change the indentation of this and then I save this, we now have a massive error message. Okay, well, that's a bit of a problem. But what happens if we keep this like that? We open up a new instance of the terminal. Oh, well, that's what happens. Okay, so if you don't close the terminal, it's going to be fine. But if you reopen a new instance of the terminal, it's going to completely break. Now, the reason it's breaking this bad is just because my mono font doesn't actually work properly on my system. That's the only reason it is spacing the characters weirdly like this. On your system, it won't space them like that, I hope at least. But if you do have the configuration file broken, it is going to be a little bit of an issue. But the nice thing is that when you do fix it, you don't even have to open up the terminal again. It's just going to reload it and... It's just going to work perfectly fine. So we can change this back to JetBrains Mono, which is my preferred font. And I'm not sure why it just broke there. Oh, it's because I had the font misspelled. Make sure you actually spell your fonts properly. So if it has a capital in it, include the capital, because otherwise, yeah, bad things are going to happen. So you can configure a lot of stuff in here, like the bold font, the italic font, uh, a bold italic font, all of this stuff. There's nothing too crazy that I really want to go in depth into. Uh, I don't know how the font size actually works in this program because I'm pretty sure that this isn't 0.8 size font. This looks more like 0.12. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on with this sizing. But yeah, it's a little bit weird like that. One thing I had to do when I actually switched over to this program was actually modify the offset of the character spacing. So you might notice that if you're running the same font as me, the font looks a little bit different. So let's just reset that back to default. And as you'll notice, the font is, it's a little bit too far away for my liking. I like the way that ST does it, where it puts the characters pretty close to each other. So I've done the same thing here. Now, I've just got that as negative one spacing. The problem with this is you can't do a decimal. You have to do integer values. So if negative one is too little and negative two is too much, then you're kind of stuck. So... Let's just set this to negative two and see what actually happens. I'm pretty sure this is way too much. Yeah, that's that's a little too close for me, but I don't know, maybe you prefer it like that. So let's just set it back to negative one and then we'll have it how I like the text to actually look. It is nice to see that being there. It's not a major feature that I really care about. I can get used to the characters being a little bit further apart, but when the option is there, I'm absolutely going to use it. So there's two more things that I want to show you in this configuration files. So the theming is done pretty easily. So you put it in this colors block and then for the primary colors, you put it in the primary block and that will let you do your background and your foreground color. You can change the cursor color and you can change the selection color. Now, the part where it might be a little bit confusing is it actually has three different color sets. So it's got its normal, it's bright and it's dim. So most terminals only give you a bright and a normal, but for some reason this has decided to bring in a third. I'm not really sure if this is standard or what's going on here because I've never seen this in any other terminal before. 
So, yeah, that's... It's interesting, but it also does weird stuff if you try to convert a color scheme from one terminal to another. So what I've basically done is just treat my normal and my bright colors as the same thing, and then have my old bright colors on dim. And this gives me a color scheme that looks basically the same as what I had before. If someone knows whether this is standard to have three different color blocks like this, let me know, because I have never seen this before, so maybe I'm just going crazy. Now the last thing I wanted to show you, I don't really care about this part here. If you want to disable the live updates, you can do that by setting this line here to false. I don't know why you'd want to. I don't think there's really a performance hit from doing it because I think it only changes when the file actually changes. So yeah, it's there's not really a performance hit from doing it. I would just leave it on if I was you, but some people I guess don't really like doing updates like that. Now the one thing I wanted to show you was down the bottom here. So there's a lot of stuff in here about doing key bindings. You can change what your mouse keys do. So you can say you want your middle mouse button to do a paste. I might change my middle mouse to do a copy just so I have an easy way to copy with my mouse. But you can also rebind all of the keyboard keys as well. So the keys in here are the default bindings. So if you press V and control shift, that'll do a paste. I didn't actually know about that. I hadn't actually checked the keys in here. So control shift, V. Oh, that actually does do a paste. That is really cool to see. So yeah, you can change all of these bindings. You doesn't really matter what you change them to. It seems pretty straightforward how you do it as well. I might come and actually modify some of these. But yeah, it's it looks pretty straightforward how this works. So you set the key in the first section. So for example, you can do it with V or you can do it with C, insert, whatever it is you want to do. It seems like the number keys are numbered like this though, so key and then the number. I'm not sure why, that's a weird decision to do, but anyway. And then you can set the modifier keys, so in this case, for this first one, it's control and shift, so I'm guessing that if you do a pipe, that just treats it as an and. That's, I think ST did the same thing as well. There's probably a good reason for that, I'm not really sure about how this works on the back end. And then you can bind that to an action. Now, it looks like all of the actions are defined up here, but I don't know if you can define other actions. I haven't actually looked into this, whether you can do things like output text like this. Oh, yes, you can. So you can output characters like this as well. So if you change this from action to chars, then you can do it like that. So let's just do something like that pretty quickly. So let's change this to S, we'll do a capital S, and change this to chars. Now, as I said, I'm going to do a dedicated video on this. I didn't actually know that this was even a section in here until just now, but let's change this to, I don't know, plus plus. So if we do control, I'll, I'll zoom in, control shift and then S, that will print out plus plus. Okay, so you can actually bind arbitrary keys to print out arbitrary text. That is actually really cool to see. So before when I was using ST, I was just using a patch to do this. But I guess we can just do this built into the terminal. That is really nice to see. I know that a lot of other terminals already do this and some do it through a GUI interface, but it is still really nice to see that as a feature. Now I'm not gonna go any more into the configuration today. One, because I'm at the bottom of the file and there's nothing else too interesting to look at, but also because it's pretty well documented in here. So I will do a separate video on it, but if you wanna have a look at it for yourself, then it seems pretty straightforward. So go check out my GitHub page. That'll have a link to my configuration file, which has all of this stuff in it. As I said before, I'm pretty sure this comes with the download of the application. So I didn't show you that before, but you can just get it from the standard package repos, at least on Arch. On other distros, on Windows, you can get it through Choco. On FreeBSD, you can get it like that. It seems to be in most, yeah, it's actually in most standard repos. You can even get it on Fedora. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So, yeah, anyway. Um, if you want to install on Arch, we can just go sudo pacman-s and then go alacrity. Now, I'm pretty sure it's pronounced alacrity, not alacrity, but I could be entirely wrong there. Everyone I've heard talk about has been saying alacrity, so that's how I'm going to say it from now on. I could be wrong though. So if someone actually knows the correct way to pronounce it, let me know and I'll be happy to correct it. But yeah, this seems like a pretty solid terminal emulator. One other thing I didn't show you was how LF actually looks. So yeah, nothing too crazy here. One thing it does do is it also does 
the uh, connection of line characters. So in vanilla ST, it doesn't actually connect up these characters. So there's little, it's basically like a bunch of little dashes. In Alacrity though, it actually does fix that problem. In ST, you can download the box draw patch, which will address that problem. But it is nice to see that actually built into a terminal as well. So yeah, there's a lot of just really neat features built into Alacrity. And unlike something like Kitty, where it has like an image previewer and a bunch of other stuff built into it, this is a pretty minimal terminal, but not minimal to the point of just being annoying like ST is, where it's like, you don't get scroll back, or you don't get key binding to print out arbitrary text, or just other little things like that that are just missing from ST. Now I get why it's set up like that in ST, but I do really like to see a terminal that does have all that stuff built into it by default. My build of ST did eventually have most of that stuff, except for the link handling, but everything else was in that. ST for me just had a couple of little issues that Alacrity does address without being a really heavy terminal like Kitty is. So I'm gonna stick with it from now on. My fork of ST isn't going anywhere. So if you run that, then it's not going anywhere. It's gonna rain on my GitHub and I might update it from time to time if I get bored. But for now, I'm gonna be sticking with Alacrity as my main terminal. And then if I ever need to, ST is gonna just be there as my backup terminal. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. So if you like this video, then remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, then remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my social links. I've also got my support links and I've got my alternate video platform. So feel free to go check any of those out. I think that's pretty much everything for this video and I'm out.